What is good, Cloudy people? Welcome back to Cloudy Skies News, episode 27, where we go over the Instagram feed news of the week on a bi-weekly basis every Wednesday and Saturday. If you're here from the a and video, welcome. This shit's only the start. I'm growing super rapidly. This is super relevant to my last video where I called Ian Dior an industry plant, which he very well might be. He's still a very good artist, so I just have to make that clear before I digress. Now, let's get into the first piece of news where Taz Taylor responds to the accusations of Ian Dior being an industry plant. Now, he didn't necessarily respond to me, although I wish he did because my video only has like 400 views or something like that, but he responded to Progress, who is a big YouTuber, or relatively big YouTuber in this realm at least, who goes over industry plant. Actually, he was my inspiration for doing an Ian Dior video being an industry plant because he did one on Jumex a while ago. So I was like, damn, that was pretty dope. So I gave it a try. Yeah, so check out that video at the top right. But anyway, Taz Taylor responded on Twitter, basically saying Ian Dior is not an industry plant, just FYI. He also doesn't copy Juice World or sound like Juice. The reason he mentions the Juice World shit is because Progress was saying that he was basically a carbon copy of Juice World, which I don't agree with but I could see what he's talking about from a standpoint of someone who doesn't listen to emo rap because everyone in emo rap kind of sounds like Juice World just because Juice World is like the biggest advocate of emo rap. But we will continue. Kid lives in my fucking house. I know what he's listening to and being influenced by every damn second of the day. So it looks like Taz Taylor has taken him under his wing, which I was right. Internet money has really taken him and just blown him up by being associated with him and putting him in their stories and all social media so basically if you do this with any artist no matter how good they are honestly they're gonna blow up in my opinion now Ian Dior was actually talented so that's why he blew up so fast too but anyway the kid honestly made music before he started working with Nick but it was never anything serious he was going by his legal last name because it wasn't serious so he rebranded using his middle name and Nick produced all the shit and blew him up using twitch okay well I didn't even know Nick Mira actually had a twitch to be honest maybe I should subscribe and use his gameplay for videos such as this but we'll continue again none of us anticipated this shit being this big this fast juice blew up and started working with other producers so Nick wanted to start working with another artist that's the plot behind Ian just something else to work on no fake shit as for the phase shit so before I continue this is basically responding to how Tifu, Rice Gum, Phase Banks and all of these people started co-signing Ian Dior out of nowhere even though he really wasn't big at all it looks like the Nick Mira association slash co-sign did help a lot because again no one would really know Ian Dior unless Nick Mira or Taz Taylor were fucking with him and then Tifu and all of them have like a mainstream audience they have millions of followers and subscribers so anyone they co-sign any artist really is gonna blow up it's happened before if you want more details on this whole situation again go watch my video with Ian Dior and as for the face shit T-Wop found Ian's music due to Nick's twitch streams and showed it to Banks and Tifu Ian literally had to have his fans spam them so they knew who it was who made the music they used it in one of their videos they followed him and started fucking with him Ian isn't signed to me or internet money or even Nick we strictly just executive produce everything we like the music and he's turned into our brother over the past four months that's it so Taz Taylor is saying that he's not signed to him however even if Ian Dior is not signed with internet money they definitely get royalties from the production and executive producing so even though they're not signed they technically still do have a stake in Ian Dior's career especially because every single song that Ian Dior has out right now is produced by Nick Miro and or Taz Taylor or internet money people so again they're making money off of it Taz Taylor just saying that they're not signed to him is really just circumventing the issue to all the fans that don't know that producers receive royalties from music and Ian Dior has had like a million streams on Spotify from emotions and SoundCloud actually monetizes now too so they're making money off all the SoundCloud streams and he has like millions on every single song there so you're not fooling us Taz Taylor and then Taz Taylor says as for the PNB rock shit I had a session with PNB at my crib where we was working on shit for him after this session I introduced him to Ian and said he should fuck with his shit I played him what was romance 361 and he was like this is fire loaded up that's it 
Ian actually ended up dropping Romance 361 without telling PNB or his team or his label and they made him remove PNB until he actually signed a deal with the label so he would clear the record. Does that sound like an industry plant? I don't think this really is even relevant to the industry plant shit because as long as Ian Dior is at Taz Taylor's house being co-signed by all these big producers, that's already an industry plant. The PNB rock shit is completely irrelevant to the argument. It probably supports the claim that he's an industry plant because the PNB rock feature would not have happened if he was not chilling at Taz Taylor's house or chilling with Nick Mira. And even if he was chilling with him, PNB rock probably would not have hopped on it without it being a Nick Mira or Taz Taylor produced song. And that concludes my argument on Taz Taylor responding to Ian Dior, basically saying Ian Dior is not an industry plant, but Taz Taylor really didn't give any concrete evidence that he's not an industry plant. You can still fuck with someone and them be an industry plant. An industry plant is really just defined as someone who seemingly grows organically, but really has a label behind them. And internet money is a label in essence, and you blew him up out of nowhere from like 16,000 followers to over 100K in like less than a month. So, and in this association with him, you got all of the huge people to fuck with him as well who are mainstream. So it may be organic in a sense, but it started off with the label backing. I rest my case. Let's get on to the next piece of news. Speaking of PMB Rock, he went on Big Boy TV interview and mentioned that he has a new song coming out on his album with XXXTentacion. And whenever they collab, you know it's gonna be fire. It's gonna be called Middle Child, just like the J. Cole song. And that was one of the concerns coming from PNB Rock that he didn't wanna like steal the flame from J. Cole or even not get enough recognition for the song given it's XXX Tentacion and because of the J. Cole song and J. Cole is technically bigger than both of them, maybe even combined. But that's an argument for another case. But yeah, so he just decided that he's gonna keep it middle child to respect X and not change the name just because it has the same name as another rapper, which happens frequently, so that doesn't matter that much. Hopefully we get a preview of this song soon. I hope, in my opinion, that it's a PNB rock vibe, but then X goes in raps because I honestly like X rapping on his swag rap the most out of his lyricist flow, and then he also has the singing. But yeah, again, we'll see. Nobody actually knows. Next piece of news, Kodak Black's tour bus was raided while he was performing. I'm not sure which city he was in, However, it looks like Kodak is fine currently, but it's not looking good for Kodak in the long run, especially because he's already fighting a case for pretty much rape or, you know, being forceful with a woman, which I can't really see him doing. It's just the girl doing the Me Too movement because, I mean, honestly, all these girls are preying on Kodak. I don't see why he would ever have to force a girl to have sex with him. But I don't know Kodak personally, so maybe it's true. But anyway, it looks like the FBI or whatever agencies are in the government are out for Kodak, especially after he got stopped like from the Canada-US border where they found weapons in his car or something like that because he took a wrong road. When that happened, he was blaming the GPS because it took him like the wrong way and then coincidentally he ran into cops. So maybe the cops hacked his phone. Nah, I'm joking, but Kodak Black better be careful. He needs to cut down on his entourage because his entourage is getting him in trouble. I'm sure those are the people that are like riding around with their sticks and their pants and shit because he doesn't need anything like that other than security that has permits for that. But I'm sure he rolls with like 30 dudes in his tour bus just because that's the type of person he is. But X warned him back in the day. He really did. He said, you need to cut down on your crew so that you don't get in trouble. You need to stop going back to the projects. But yeah, pray for Kodak. He might be gone for a while if this kind of stuff persists. And last piece of news, Travis Scott, which is just speculation on my part. Kylie Jenner in her Instagram story was seen with a larger engagement ring. I'm not sure if this means they got re-engaged or got engaged. I don't know like the whole schematics behind getting married, but she has a much bigger and different diamond ring on in her latest story. And I think she was trying to make it apparent when she was promoting Kylie Kai Brow or whatever it's called, one of her cosmetic new product lines. And it's honestly genius on her part because if she has a new ring and she's promoting this product, it's like almost free promo. Everybody's gonna be like, oh my God, Kylie Jenner's just got a new ring. And then that other product is already in the video so it's kind of like paying for product placement but not paying but then I looked on YouTube and Google apparently they were already engaged like a year ago so I don't know what people are saying with this new ring 
I didn't really pay attention to their ring in the first place, so maybe I'm wrong, but they're engaged and apparently they're superheroes as seen in this picture. So that concludes today's Cloudy Skies News Podcast. I will see you next time. Make sure to go watch my Ian Dior exposed industry plant video if you haven't already, as I mentioned before. I will see you next time. Peace out, cloudy people. Nonsense.